Hey guys, it's Kip here from KDC Marketing and in today's video I want to show you how you can create custom fields in Wix forms. So this is my Wix Studio website here and I just have a couple of wireframe sections for my hero section and a couple of other sections here. But down here I have my form and Wix forms is great for lead generation. So you can build multi-page forms, you can build really advanced forms with their form builder and this is an example of a form that has some rules applied to it so let me show you what I mean so I'm just gonna fill out this information here I'm just gonna put in some uh, fake data so I'm just gonna put in a phone number and then if I select this product here what product are you interested in if I select product one you'll notice that a new field is going to show up so when I select that product now I can submit what size small, medium, or large. If I select product two, that field is hidden. So I'm going to show you how you can build something like this uh, on your own in Wix Studio on the back end. So the first step here is you have to have your forms added to your website. So I'm going to add a new section and to add a form you just go over here to add elements with the plus sign in the top left. You have, you'll find the contact and forms down here and then I like to create a new form or you could use an existing form. But I'm going to click create new form and it's going to take me to the form builder here. So this is what the form builder looks like and you just drag and drop these different sections into the form builder that you want. So they have it broken down by contacts, general choices, these other categories here. So you can scroll and see all the different things you can add or you can just click on these and it will jump you into the section. Now they've recently updated this uh, to make it more organized and uh, they've already automatically added a submit button when you add a new form uh, which I really like so I'm just gonna drag a few uh, fields over and you can see how easy and quick this is um, and then once you drag the field over you have the settings over here so you can make this a required field you can add placeholders and descriptions and you can get the uh, advanced fields where you can see the field key and it shows you what that means and then you can also add character limits to these forms. So you can you can do some really uh, great things here. I'm not going to go into each of these for this video but just want to show you there's a lot of different options. Um, and then once I have my, my form fields then what I will do is I will build in that rule. So I have first name, last name, email, phone number and then I have my uh, drop down so I got to find the drop down here and then here's where I said what product so I'm just gonna do this really short for the sake of this video but what product and then I said product one and product two for the options and you can add more than just two options and that's my what product drop down and then the way that I added that rule where that one would show up based on the option that they selected is I added a new new field in here so I added another drop down where I said what size and then I said small medium or large so I'll just type these in really quick small medium and then I need a third option so I just click this and large and then the way that you get this to work is you actually hide this field right here. So over here on the left hand side, I kind of mentioned this at the beginning of the video, you have the opportunity to add multiple pages to your form and you have the opportunity to the ability to add rules to your form as well. So you can add a rule here where, uh, so I actually have to hide this first. So I'm going to go in and hide this field. So now it's grayed out and then I'm going to go over to rules and I'm going to select what product and if the condition. So if they if it's equal to product one, then I want that field to show. Then I want what size, which is this field that's grayed out and I want it to be shown. And if, if I was wanting this to be a required field as well, I would just add another rule. So an and and so it would also make this what size required. So what will happen is, is when someone selects product one, if they select product one here, 
this field will show and become required. And I can preview this. This is what it looks like to the customer uh, on the on the front end. So I can I can test this out, right? So if I select product one, it's not showing. Why is it not showing? I'll have to go back and see if I messed something up here. What product? Product is equal to product one. What size? This field is shown and it is required. Oh, because I didn't save the rule. <laughs> so this is a good, a good example here in real time. You have to save the rule in order for it to work. And you should always preview your form before you uh, make sure you publish it. So now if we select this product, then we have the desired result that we wanted. We had this, this field show up and this little asterisk right here means that this field is required. So if I go back and make some of these other fields required, you'll see the asterisk right next to them. So now those are all required. If I do this one, it makes this one required as well before I can submit that field. So once I have my form, I actually am gonna rename this form and I'm gonna name it product one, or maybe it's, maybe it's a product selection form or something. So I've got my form named, I'm gonna save it, and then I'm gonna go back to the front end here. So it's added my form here now to the website. So I was just showing you how to build the web, the form from scratch. Um, so this one was already built up here. And then here's what I did to get it to look like this. So um, it, you'll notice that it's kind of boxed right around, there's not a lot of space around the elements. So I'm gonna go into settings and I'm gonna to go to layout and I'm gonna give each of my side padding and top and bottom 24 pixels. So if I do that, it's gonna give me some breathing room and now I've got this box around the form. And then for my section, I'm going to give myself 6% padding everywhere. So you'll see that is notated by the green box around the form. And if I want my form to fill the remaining space here of this section, then all I have to do is click this plus sign and it will stretch this form to the remaining space. So now it's stretched it to that remaining space with the 6%. So that's how I got my form to look like this, this section. And then I always think it's good practice to rename your section here. So I might rename this uh, product form so I know what my section is, and you can see these other sections aren't named. I might name the section at the top, hero section, and then about section, and everything, just to keep everything really organized. So that's how you create a form that has a rule uh, in, in, uh, embedded into it. And these are great where you have things where if someone marks yes or no, you want them to, to it, it means that they might have different options they need to pick or if they pick a product, like in this case, a certain product, maybe you have additional questions that you want to ask them about that product, but you don't want them to show up unless they select that specific product. So I'm just gonna preview this one more time and show you what happens if I select product one, this, this pops up. If I select product two, nothing happens and I click submit. Same with this one. The only difference between these two are that I made this one show up and be required and this one did not have the required there. So if you ever need to go back in and edit these forms, all you do is you click on the form here, you click on edit form, and it will take you to this backend form builder that we were working on before. And you could always go in and edit and customize this. Like you could add a page to your form and then it would have a next button and you could add more fields here. Maybe you want their birthday and what company they work at and uh, their position at the company. So you can, you can build really uh, comprehensive forms with the Wix form builder, and then you can add rules to, even here we just had it show a field, but you could add a rule to uh, do other advanced things as well. So I just wanted to show you a couple of options. I really like the Wix form builder. I think it's pretty easy to use with the drag and drop features here, and then you have the customization abilities with the rules and the pages that you can always, always use. And as we saw in the video earlier, just make sure that when you create a rule, you save it and that you preview it and test it before you uh, have it go live on your website. 
And then once the form submissions come in, they'll show up here. You'll have someone who filled out the form. It'll have all the data here that you need. So you can see that uh, there for that form. So Wix forms are great for lead generation. They don't cost you extra. Um, you get the forms when you have a premium plan um, and you can, I think you can even use them on the free plan. And they have other capabilities that we didn't cover today too, where you can add in donations and uh, you can add in products and dates and um, you can add in text elements too, like you could add a header here or a, a little text paragraph as well. So hope that that helps to show you how you can create these custom fields. Super cool. I'm starting to use these more for myself and for my clients and just wanted to highlight that there that is an option in, inside of the Wix form builder. So I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next video.